read news every day. News that's informative, but rarely encouraging. The Intermountain Christian Newspaper aims to change that. They present the news you need to know, from what's going on in your community to your world, with encouraging words, motivation, and the resources you need to make positive changes in your life. What is your local government doing that you need to know about? What's happening in your community you need to be a part of? Whether it's a story from your neighborhood, a national story, or an encouraging word, you'll find biblical issues of everyday life in the Intermountain Christian Newspaper. Intermountain Christian News is produced and supported by the work and donations of individuals and churches. You'll find it at churches, Christian bookstores, by subscription, and online at imcnews.org. To find out more about supporting this local resource, go online at imcnews.org or call Intermountain Christian News in Boise, Idaho at 208-703-8688. The Intermountain Christian News, a voice sharing the truth on matters dear to people's hearts. Are you tired of the secular news? Do you want a Christian view of politics? Do you want to know what is going on in your Christian community? Your wait is over. Welcome to the Intermountain Christian News Hour. Here is your host, Dr. Anthony Harper. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour, making a difference, and we are a voice of truth, and uh, we are a voice of truth about Israel. Uh, we report the truth uh, about what, what is really happening and uh, Lynn and Cheryl Watts joined me from Israel. Uh, it's great to talk with you again. It's good to be with you again, Anthony. Hey, Anthony. Hello. Um, uh, I just I would say shalom. I just love that word, uh, Hebrew word. And uh, looking forward to uh, um, being able to see you in person again. It was, we've had some great times together. Yeah, we miss you over here. It's time to come back. There's so much going on in Israel, you wouldn't believe it. So it's hard. It's so, it's so difficult that we can't get all the news reports out anymore. I've been here in May 14th, on May 14th, it'll be 17 years. And the reports I used to do once a month, and I had to do it twice a month, and now I can't keep up with the news that's happening. So you need to come back and see what's going on and get these reports out. It's amazing. And it's not getting to America, as you know. Many um, media sources will not carry the news, or if they do, they'll carry partial bits of the news, and it's not given Israel justice, because it sounds like Israel is a culprit in a lot of the media uh, overseas, but Israel isn't. And I work with Palestinians, I work with Muslims, I've been doing that for at least 15 years. So, yeah, you need to come and see for yourself what's going on here. And I'm talking not just you, Anthony, but everybody, because the truth really does matter. And I thank you for getting the truth out. Well, you know, people can get your newsletter to be updated on what's going on, right? Yeah, that's true. They can. And they can, uh, if they want to email me at reportingfromisrael at gmail.com. And that's reportingfromisrael, all one word, at gmail.com. Then they will keep up a little bit with the news. I put little paragraphs trying to get information out to people that don't get the news in the West, and um, it does help. And so if anybody has any questions, they can email me at that address also. Okay. And, um, yeah, I, I do want to come back to Israel again, uh, Cheryl. I would, I would love to uh, actually be there on a consistent basis in Jerusalem, my favorite city in the world. And uh, especially to be at the Temple Mount, and we know Yeshua, our Messiah, is going to be there at the Temple Mount, reigning over the entire earth, and how I wish that were now. Yeah, you know, as a matter of fact, we got in a discussion with a Jewish person today. She's more secular. But we got to talk, and especially Len got to talk about the Messiah and who he is, you know, and it's amazing. Her eyes were opened a little bit more as to what's really going on. Who is this Yeshua, this Jesus? Yeshua actually means salvation in Hebrew. So when you say Yeshua, they're thinking Messiah is their salvation, and that's who Mashiach, Yeshua HaMashiach, is Jesus the Messiah. Jesus the salvation. Jesus is the Greek, and Yeshua is the Hebrew. But anyways, we had a wonderful discussion, and everybody agrees on that point, that um, the Lord will put his foot on the Mount of Olives, and he will eventually reign here. His temple mount is here. Jerusalem has been the capital of Israel for the past 3,000 years. 
and he's coming back. This is where his house was. They built, remember King David Solomon built the house for the Lord, and that's where he was, on that mercy seat. Remember that? Yeah. Anyways, that temple's not there, but the temple mount is there, and he's coming back, and people are so waiting for him. So it's an exciting time. Uh, interesting, difficult time, but exciting also because we know the end of the book and that he will be reigning here. So I look forward to you coming back here, and hopefully it will be before that, Anthony. <laughs> Oh, oh yes. Um, you know, there's a lot, a lot of uh, support of a Palestinian state. Um, at least uh, President Obama would like for that to see happen. And a lot of people in the, in the U.S. are deceived to think that that the Palestinian statehood is going to bring peace uh, to Israel. What what would you say that a lot of the Israel citizens think about this idea of a Palestinian statehood? Yes. Yeah. Um. But what I would what I would like to say to that is that um, the, the there was a an offer by Abbas to meet with uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, to talk about uh, peace with uh, Israel and uh, the 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 thing is that uh, uh, Netanyahu has invited President Abbas to speak many times uh, with him about uh, peace negotiations. But the one, uh, there's a couple of uh, negotiating points on the table. One is to stop the violence uh, by the Palestinian uh, or Iranian, Iranian uh, youth that are coming over and uh, stabbing and killing Jews first on the table. Secondly, is that the um, quote-unquote Palestinian Authority has to recognize Israel's right to exist. And uh, once they get through these points, of course, Israel is more than happy to talk about peace negotiations. Yeah, so also, he meant to say the Palestinian kids that come over with the knives, they're from 11 years old, they could be a a little kid, a little girl, or a grandmother or grandfather, and they are stabbing the Jewish people. And the problem is that the Palestinian Authority, television and radio, is inciting this violence. So Netanyahu has asked them to stop the incitement. That's number one for sitting down at negotiations. You've got to stop killing us so we can sit down and talk about peace. You know, show that you want peace. And the second thing is that uh, Abbas wants preconditions. He said, I won't sit down until you stop building in Judea and Samaria. And Israel actually stopped building new places in Judea and Samaria, which people call the West Bank but they build on to what they already have. Some buildings are being built on. But the second one is that all refugees that left in 1948 are allowed to return, and you're talking about a million people. And there's just some things that have to be negotiated, not preconditions to sitting down. So Netanyahu said, let's sit down and talk now. No preconditions. Just tell your people to stop the knife attack right now. It's called the knife intifada. You do that, we'll sit down and we'll talk about peace, we'll make borders, whatever you want to do. And then Abbas said today, as Len was saying, that there was an article, he said, well, I will meet with Netanyahu any time. Netanyahu has cleared his schedule this week to meet with Abbas because Abbas said that he would meet with Netanyahu any time. But he forgot to put in the if Netanyahu and Israel will do this and will do that in preconditions. So this is what the world doesn't know. That yes, both of them are saying we'll sit down and meet, but Netanyahu's condition is that you stop telling your people to kill us, and Abbas's condition is that you do that you let the refugees come back, that you stop building in Judean Samaria, Obama. There's a few other conditions, and oh, and recognize Israel as a Palestinian state. That's what Israel wants them to do, and they won't recognize Israel. So how can you have peace with somebody that you don't even recognize as a people group? You know. So it's it's a big mess. No one sees that there's going to be peace here until the Messiah comes back, until the Prince of Peace comes. But hopefully they can make some kind of agreement because it's very difficult for people living in Judea and Samaria, which is called, again, the West Bank. And uh, they can't, they're actually it's under military control. It's not under Israeli control or Palestinian control. It's under military control right now. It's that's who administers, and um, Israel has given the Palestinian Authority in areas A. There's A, B, and C in areas A. That's where the Palestinian Authority administers. But Israel 
big ministers here, and uh, it's really, they don't want to do something. They don't want all these Palestinians under their wings, and have, it's just amazing that there are so many Palestinians, if they have them in Israel proper, that they're going to, pretty soon, because they have, you know, more than one wife, and then they have, you know, between eight and 12 children, so they can help grow Israel, the Jews, and they can actually become a Palestinian state instead of a Jewish state. And Israel does not want that to happen, so there has to be negotiation. But boy, are we in a jam. I guess you can tell by how I set all this up. <laughs> yes, it's a real problem, and I think and what's more important for people to think about is that it, it angers God to talk about the dividing up the land of Israel, but people don't seem to care about what he thinks. So... Um, yeah, it's true. It's true. And they don't look at that. Well, you're looking at a government in Israel that's pretty much secular. And there's ultra-Orthodox Jews that say, hey, this isn't even the land of Israel. The Israel's coming when the Messiah comes. So they don't even, um, they don't uh, support Israel, modern Israel. But as you and I see it, and most believers and Christians and a lot of Jewish people, of course, see it as prophecy being fulfilled. I mean, in 1948, Israel became a nation after 2,000 years. The Bible says it would become a nation. The people were brought back from all over the four corners of the world. In the Bible, it says the people would be dispersed and then brought back. And it said that the, the barren land that was desert and swamps would become fruitful and produce and export and that's what's going on here. So you can see the prophecies that have been fulfilled in the land, the modern-day land of Israel, and you know the prophecies that are coming. So we see that the government is not paying close attention to that, though Netanyahu does have Bible studies at his home, and they do the Bible studies once a week. And when I say Bible studies, I mean the Torah and the Tanakh, which is the Jewish Bible, of course, but it's the same scriptures we read. So they know they're God's chosen people, that God will intervene at some point. They know these scriptures. But they need to do, as you have always told me, everyone needs to humble themselves and pray. And you can go ahead with that, Anthony, which you really want to do. Well, of course, uh, Second Chronicles 7.14 is the one that uh, scripture that uh, Christians refer to in calling to prayer. Uh, Franklin Graham is uh, quoting that scripture in his 50-state capital tour. Um, and that that being, uh, if my people, which are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and here's the pivotal part, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear for, from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. And and uh, a lot of people don't really understand that the most important pivotal part is that turning from wickedness, and uh, we, we have a lot of uh, wickedness uh, on a national level and here in America, and even in the churches that have have left, uh, uh, stopped sharing the gospel message. Wow. And here you have a lot of wickedness in the government, even the Israeli government. I mean, it's in all of us. We're all sinners, and that's why we needed a Savior. Right. Thank God for that. But as we look at what's going on here in Israel, and things are beginning to turn, we're starting to see the nations coming against Israel. And that's, that's a prophecy that all nations will come against Jerusalem, Jerusalem being the capital of Israel, and there's a program called the DDS, Boycott Movement. Yes. Um, then you want to talk about this for a second? Um, the DDS uh, movement is an anti-Semitic um, organization. Uh, they are, uh, they, the letters stand for Boycott, Divestment, and Sanction. And uh, the boycott is to boycott all, all products that are made. And they, they started off with any product made in, in uh, Judea and Samaria, or otherwise known as the West Bank. That seems to have changed. Now they're boycotting uh, all products made in Israel. And the divestment is uh, to affect those uh, corporations who make profit from investing in Israel. And they want to um, have those corporations pull their financial support of Israel away. Um, there, that has, in some ways, been somewhat successful. Um, and then the sanction is, of course, to uh, sanction Israel financially to... Um, to separate them, uh, or excuse me, to, um, to sanction their, the, the government from any funds coming in to support Israel. 
And um, uh, at this point, um, the the BDS movement has made some success. They have um, they have been able to mislead uh, people in the West. Uh, the um, uh, there have been a couple of churches that have pulled their finances. The Methodist out. Church, Presbyterian Church. The Methodist and Presbyterian churches have uh, pulled back finances from Israel, supporting Israel, actually, and that is to the tune of millions of dollars. So um, Cheryl and I are, um, are are speaking against the BBS because, um, well, we believe that, that the Lord has... Um, has directed us because we keep finding in scripture that um, that if they that the BDS well in Ezekiel thirteen ten it says that they mis- they mislead my people by saying peace when there is no peace and when anyone builds a wall of lies they flash it over with whitewash and that seems to be what BDS is doing they're building a wall of lies and they're and they're they're plastering it over with white they're whitewashing the truth. And another way to look at it is that they are refining their lies until they resemble the truth. Israel is not guilty of apartheid by the way that the BDS is presenting it to the world. And um, you know, were it not for uh, Israel's support of, uh, of the Palestinian people, quote-unquote, um, they, they uh, would not be um, financially or even in, in the infrastructure of, of, of Gaza would have fallen apart. And uh, even in uh, Bethlehem and in, in, in the West Bank, um, Israel has um, been very supportive. And um, so here, I'll let Cheryl weigh in on this. Okay. So as you can see, what's going on with the BDS is they are trying to um, make Israel look like a bully to the Palestinian people when this isn't really the truth of what's going on. And we talked to some people down in uh, Meshore Agamim, which is the industrial area today, and they hire people. They hire these Palestinian people, Arabs, and they come in and there's uh, about 3,000 of them working in Israel uh, for Israeli employees. And they make good money. They make 5,000 Five thousand shekels uh, uh, a month, and in the West Bank, they they make one thousand shekels a month. So they love working for Israel. They get benefits, and they are losing their jobs because the BDS movement, who says they're trying to help the poor Palestinians, they're actually trying to ruin Israel, and they don't care about the casualties, which are the Palestinians. So 600 of them lost their jobs last month when SodaStream had to move out of Mishore Adamim and move down to Beersheba. And there go the Palestinian jobs. Six, 600 oh. Arabs lost their jobs. It's sad. Oh, it is. Uh, well, if you think, uh, uh, you mentioned 1,000 shekels a month. Uh, and and that's uh, that's not very much money in American dollars. No, well, a thousand shekels a month is is Israeli currency, um, and that's if they can find a job. In yeah. American um, money, that would be approximately two hundred and fifty dollars a month. Wow, it costs a lot to live in Israel. Yeah, it costs a lot to live in Israel. Um, actually, gas is about between eight and nine dollars a gallon for us, and uh, any every food, everything you buy is more expensive, except for fruit and bread. That's pretty good. But yeah, the cost of living is higher, the wage is lower. But with the Palestinian people, if you go over there to buy things, people used to go to Bethlehem all the time, which is now part of the Palestinian Authority. But you would buy food cheaper because the people there couldn't afford it. The Palestinian Authority does not pay their people. Uh, it's between They do pay their people three to $500 a month. That's all they get. And most of them have, like I said, huge families. And we got an article, which was really kind of funny, not funny, but um, the tunnel building under the Gaza Strip, they're building from Gaza tunnels to reach Israel so they can attack Israelis. They employ 1,000 prisoners Oh, excuse me, workers. <laughs> they they employ one thousand workers to build these tunnels, and they make how much? Between three and four hundred dollars per month. Can you imagine digging for nine, ten hours a day, and you make three and four hundred dollars a month? Three or four hundred. That's what's going on. Here. Wow. Israel employs them and pays them minimum wage. 
So it's quite different when they work. And so EDS is not a help to the Palestinian people. Don't be fooled. They're trying to bring down Israel and make them look like the culprits. Oh, and it's really hard. It's oh, hard. We're fighting the lies with truth. Well, I remember uh, being on a tour uh, about the BDS movement uh, when the uh, GPO uh, government press office in Israel took us uh, news reporters up to uh, up to northern Israel. I, I guess that was the the West Bank area um, where um, I'm assuming where where we have the, the the factories are at, right? Yeah, yeah. You went to Barkan. That's right. There's a lot of factories out there. And, um, yeah, it's a serious problem. And uh, we have a mutual friend in the name, name of Barry Shaw. Yeah. Uh, He's written books about the BDS, yeah? Go ahead, Anthony. Yeah, great, great resources from Barry Shaw about the BDS, the books that he's he's written. And uh, I've had a previous interview with him. And it's a, a very... Um, a challenging time for Israel. We want for people to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, for Israel, uh, protection. And uh, we're, I, I know we're trying to get the truth out, uh, Cheryl and Lynn, uh, about what, what is really happening. And uh, God willing, we'll be able to, to uh, reach more people with the truth. Yeah, and you know, with that prayer, praying, praying for the peace of Jerusalem, we can pray for the, even the kids, the Arab kids, the Palestinian, that are being so brainwashed that, that their land has been stolen by the Jews and they need to go and take the land back in whatever way they can. These kids are committing suicide by coming in and killing with knives because they're being killed. Um, please pray for these kids. I mean, it's it's crazy. They don't even have a childhood. I worked with them for so long, and it's it's hard seeing them to go this way, you know, because they're being taught the wrong way. They're being taught the history wrong. But thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all you do, Anthony, and getting the truth out. Because without the truth, what do we have? I mean, we need to keep our Bible alive. They're trying to say there's no temple. There was never a temple in Jerusalem. Well, if that's the truth, then the Bible is a lie because the Bible talks about the temple in Jerusalem. So let's keep the Bible and stand on that, that solid word of God, and on Him, and the rock. And I thank you for doing that, Anthony. Thank you for including us. I love, I love to be uh, help. I, I know that uh, Jesus, uh, Yeshua, wants us to bless Israel. And from uh, the book of Genesis, we have those that bless will be blessed, and those that curse will be cursed regarding Israel. And um, so there's really a real blessing here. We need to, we need to be obedient to what Jesus wants. And, um, and uh, of course, uh, being in Israel is so exciting. We want to encourage people to travel to Israel. That's one way of blessing Israel. And um, I want to meet Israel people, uh, Lynn and Cheryl, uh, when, uh, when, when I can sing their national anthem in Hebrew with them. It's a way of connecting and really a way of, I think, showing more love uh, to Israel by connecting with them, yeah. with knowing their national anthem, to sing it with them. Yeah, they, they, when they hear that people care about them, like you, and you come over and you sing with them, and I saw that you did in Hebrew, you cared to learn it, they are absolutely amazed that anybody does care for them. So, yeah, and as people come as tourists, no one hurts a tourist. So, do you hear about the, the knivings and all the different things that happen here? No one wants to hurt a tourist. Everybody wants the tourists to come. They want the tourist money, of course, but they want the tourists to come and enjoy Israel and see what it's like here. So I don't feel that I'm in danger. I can push it, but I don't feel that I'm in danger at all. And um, and I know that you'll be back, and that's what we're hoping for. And there's just so much to get out. Things change every few months. It's just completely changed over here, so... Thank you again, Anthony. Oh, you're, you're welcome. I'm looking forward to seeing both of you in the wonderful land of Israel and the city of Jerusalem. And uh, I, I would say, and uh, I just love to pronounce it in Hebrew, Yerushalayim, right? That's correct. Yerushalayim. Yeah, it's a beautiful city. Yeah. The golden city, they call it. Yeah, no other place like that. So, um Actually, I have a, a tour that is scheduled uh, to be in, in July to return to Israel if enough people join me in this tour. So I would invite people that want to go to Israel with me on this special tour. 
um, and would, would include a visit to the Knesset for people to observe a Knesset session and where the people could see Prime Minister Netanyahu interact with uh, the other Knesset members. Yeah, that would be the best kind of tour. At least you get on the ground, you see what's going on, and plus you see the beautiful land, of course, where Jesus walked, and and the Bible comes to life. There's, they call it uh, the fifth gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. You come here, and it comes to life, and your life will never be the same after you come to Israel. No other place. So, um, God bless you in, in your travels, uh, getting the truth out about Israel and uh, um and one, the people that want to get your newsletter, as you mentioned, they just send you an email requesting your newsletter um, to send an email to reportingfromisrael at gmail.com. Right, yeah. And then we can get right back with them. So okay. thanks again for all you do, Anthony. We'll be here. Well, thank you. For you. <laughs> God bless you all there. Safe travel. Um, and uh, looking forward to talking with you again. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, Lynn and Cheryl. Bye. Once again, Lynn and Cheryl uh, Watts joining me from Israel. Uh, what a wonderful place to be. I'll talk with you later. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you. Bye now. I'm Dr. Anthony Harper here with the Intermountain Christian News Hour, an outreach of the Intermountain Christian Newspaper making a difference. And... Uh, and we need uh, your support uh, of good news. Check out our website at imcnews.org where you can download our newspaper and make your tax-deductible don- donation to support our uh, voice, our Christian concerns at the White House and in Israel and uh, other places. Uh, do go online to uh, make your donation and support uh, this important news ministry. The only... Uh, Evangelical Christian newspaper of its kind, a grassroots newspaper in our Intermountain regions, spanning from Colorado over to Reno, Nevada. And uh, we uh, currently have needs to uh, cover our, white, uh, our travel expenses for White House and Israel trips. Uh, and also, we need a donated minivan, a uh, vehicle, a good condition, low mileage, uh, air conditioning, and automatic transmission. For delivery of our newspapers and other news events that we uh, go to 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 cover uh, representing Christian concerns, so please uh, make your donation and tax deductible online at imcnews.org just by clicking on the donate banner ad that you see there. Thank you for your support of our good newspaper and for your prayers. And most importantly, uh, that we can continue to be a voice, a voice of truth for Christians in our Intermountain region, for the glory of God. Oh, my God.